Before today's episode, we have a family friend who is missing, Michael Bryson. He's 27 years old, white male, brown hair, medium length, hazel eyes, six feet tall, around 180 pounds. He has a nose piercing and some tattoos. He has a geometric bear on the back of his arm and several tattoos on the front of his legs. Michael was last reported seen on Wednesday, August 5th, around 4 a.m. He was at a camping trip slash rave party in the forest around the Hobo Camp campground, which is located in Oregon. If you have any details about Michael Bryson or his whereabouts, please call 541-513-3413 or 541-515-1619. Thank you. Listener discretion is advised. everyone, welcome back to the I Should Totally Be Dead Right Now podcast, where we tell true stories of survivors of true crime, natural disasters, and everything else in between. Oregon is on fire. Fuck so... yeah, it is. Jesus. <laughs> so it hasn't been great. It's been very stressful. <sighs> we have Kayla's sister here. Yes, I'm here. Who I'm has here. been yes. displaced by yep. the fires. Evacuated. Yep. That sounds a little more dramatic, I guess. I mean... It's a fucking nightmare. I, the fire is about a mile from my house, so at any minute it can literally just decide to yeah. rage through. I'm oh. in a heavily forested area, so... I keep thinking of the, about that little stream you have in your yard. Is it dried up in the no. summertime? Uh, so in the summertime, you can walk across it. It's about ankle to, like, shit halfway up your shin. I've decided that stream is going to save your house. Dude, I, I mean, <laughs> that's... <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> Although I gotta say, like I, th- I honestly thought like, Chris and I both thought that because it was on the other side of Salmon River, we were like, it's not gonna jump Salmon River. It's not gonna jump the highway and Salmon River. And, and it, it sure and shit it did. did. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's just, it's just because it's been so dry. Oh yeah. We it hasn't been that dry. And, I don't know. It's so weird. Mother Nature, dude. Twenty twenty is out for. <sighs> dude, twenty twenty. True story. No, I, Kaylin. I was like, how's your sister, Kaylin? Because I knew that she was in a fire zone. And she's like, well, let me fucking tell you about my sister. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what she's doing. So you had evacuated, then went back, mm-hmm. and then no one had heard from you. And yeah, in eight we lo- hours. We lost cell reception. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. And then, so Caitlin's telling me this, and I'm crying. Like, <laughs> don't dial it. Like, all... I'm sorry. I yeah. won't even get into it. I'll probably start fucking crying again. But I wasn't. I wasn't going to. I, no, so yeah. mm-hmm. my husband's an avid car collector. He's mm-hmm. got twenty vehicles. Oh, good lord! Um, did most... you try to save the vehicles? Yes. No, we did. I'm gonna fucking kill you. So okay, no. Listen, listen. <laughs> yeah. There's no. There's no reason, Alyssa. No, there's <laughs> no. There's no good reason. No, but, no. Okay. So here's the good reason. Well, I mean, okay. Kind of. Let's, well, yeah. Let's hear it. So part of it is our YouTube channel is all of our vehicles. So like, you know, we gotta protect our YouTube channel, right? No, I'm joking. Yeah. So <laughs> I was like, we I'm were, waiting for the the pause so I can knew, start yelling. <laughs> we knew there was the fire going on, and we were not even in a stage one evacuation. But because, oh, you weren't? No. Oh. And so we, but we knew the fires were coming, and so Chris was like, okay, we can make, so up our road, instead of going into, because um, they had closed off 18, it hadn't quite crossed over, but it was getting close. Yeah, this is on the coast of yeah, Oregon. 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 Yeah, Oregon coast. So it hadn't crossed the highway yet, and we weren't in an evacuation zone at all. Our road, if you go up our road, as opposed to towards 18, you can go through the mountain. It's just mountain roads, and it puts you out. Pretty much intact. Mountain roads full of timber. Yeah. If you will. I mean, sure. <laughs> yes. But what we saw is you are in evacuation zone. Right. And we saw that you were in, like, Right. And so no, because yeah. we had no service, we have a fire station a mile from our house. And so every time, about pretty much every hour, we went to the fire station. Oh, And we wow. asked the firefighters. We're like, hey. And they literally, they told us, like, we are not worried. But we came back through the mountain after our third trip. We came back. And we were about to load up another round, and the sheriffs literally pulled in, and they said, you have to go. Oh. And so we're like, oh, okay, scratch that, grab the Legos, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Legos. Dude, 20 minutes, okay, we were out. 20 minutes, you couldn't see, there's no fire near us, oh. smoke, but my You Legos. took pictures of fire, or was that someone else's? Yes. Um, those pictures. Yes. Okay. That was shared to us. 
okay. from somebody else. I thought yeah. that was your own footage. And nope. I was like, I am going to murder a bitch tonight. Yeah. <laughs> like, but, well, I mean, glad you're safe. I yes, want Chris to be safe. Yep. And a friend so. of ours' mother, her house burned to the ground. Oh. Uh, like, in Otis. A lot of our friends and, have lost their homes. Yeah, well, and... Um, Joel's daughter and her mother are all on evacuation Mm -hmm. um, just because they're like the air quality is so bad. So we're in a city where we don't have to be evacuated yet. And I don't think we will. I don't Uh, think so either. But the air quality is not cute here. Yeah. Well, Mm -hmm. it's really, really bad. Yeah. And we all have to stay. Like, we're already quarantined and already feeling lonely. Yeah. (laughs) And now we're quarantined with all the doors and windows shut. Yeah. At least with quarantine, if you had a backyard, you you can go outside. outside. Yeah. And now you can't even. The poor dogs are stuck inside everything. So. Oh, God. I know. My dogs are used to having an acre to run on, and now they're stuck in mom and dad's house. Yeah. Yeah. With sometimes getting to go in the backyard. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, I'm glad you're safe. Yes. Good God. When We're she told glad. me you went back, I almost lost my fucking so mind. So that's why I'm staying at my parents' house. Because I yeah. told Chris, I'm like, I'm not sleeping there. Yeah. If it's safe, I will go and do 20-minute runs in Just and out. Just give it another couple days. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, And everything will hopefully have died down. Yeah. We're yeah. expecting some... Rain. Rain, yep. which is why we have the drinks we have. So oh, we yes. made oh, yeah. bright and rainies in hopes of calling the rain down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but also staying positive. Also staying positive. And turns out they're fucking delicious. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. So it. it's it? it's kind of, is it a Moscow mule? It's like with no, the ginger beer. I mean, not, well, it kind of, oh, not even it's really. Kind of. It's but, gin. Yeah, it's gin and set. Okay. So, okay, it's but it close. is, oh, it's supposed to be a take on the dark and stormy. That's what so it is. So it's bright okay, yes. and rainy, so it's the opposite. Right. But uh, it turns out they're fucking delicious. Mm-hmm. So it's an ounce and a half of gin, a half an ounce of peach schnapps, which we added, I think, a little more yeah. uh, than a half an peachy, ounce. Peachy, super good. Peachy it is, is good. peachy. Um, and then we top that with ginger ale and then a little squeeze of lime. And you have a refreshing drink that is drinkable all day. Yeah. We know. It's 10 a.m. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it is. almost noon now, right? Yeah. Oh, is 11, it really? 11.13. 11, we're well, sad. We're good. We're good. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. But No, I tried to make these. I was, for Caitlin's birthday, I had this whole <laughs> stravagant, that's not a word, I don't think, extravaganza. Yeah. Not stravaganza. Good God. Um. <laughs> extravaganza planned where we were going to have like cupcakes in the background and we were going to do these birthday martinis but turns out they don't make toasted marshmallow vodka and I asked at the liquor huh. store yeah. and they're like girl that <laughs> shit has been gone for a long time Oh, so apparently they went from toasted marshmallow to, to marshmallow. fluffed marshmallow to gone oh really yeah oh. they don't make it anymore really apparently. yeah I was like what yeah, we always had that stocked at the bar. Yeah, it's probably because no one drank it, so you had that one bottle that lasted. We always had, well, we had know, signature drinks that used something. the marshmallow, so maybe that's why. Was it good? I've never had it. Yeah. Was it? Mm-hmm. Well, so I mean, we, when we, okay, so what, what was the drink we had it with? I'm trying to remember. I mean, I guess I didn't make it that often, so maybe that's why. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. The drinks were amazing. The cupcakes you made were super delicious. Well, so happy thank birthday, you. Caitlin. Thank you. Even though it's six million days. Years. <laughs> yeah, whatever. That's okay. It's not I like, still claim it. We're still in September. Yeah, we're still in September. It's my well, birthday and, month. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I like that. Birthday month. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, and my story, of course, is dedicated to you, Caitlin. Oh, God. Uh, okay. Well. Is it a fucking nightmare story? Yeah, it is. Thank you. I... Can't wait. No problem. Uh, my story is I should totally be dead right now in a fire, but I don't. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God you're not. Melissa. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't. Oh, I can't even. I'm not going to. No. Dude, we're safe. Coming from experience now. <laughs> gas is huge. So I'm glad you said that because when our town shut down, all the gas stations closed. Oh. So we have so many people. That was one of the things that Chris did when he went back was he brought gas cans to people. Mm. Oh, mm. that's so nice. Yeah. He just filled well, up that's... all of them and Yeah, Chris like, like my car is on empty and I was like, well, drop everything, go get gas, yep. and then if you need to go, you'll be prepared. Well, and even, so like Chris's mom had to evacuate and a 45 minute drive to Newport took her six hours. <gasps> And no gas oh. stations the whole way. Dude, that's terrifying. So and like as if you're not stressed full, enough. Dude. Yeah, keep your tanks full. Ugh. I know I filled up our truck. Mm-hmm. My car outside is not filled up, but I was yeah, gonna I abandon it anyway. <laughs> Bye. 
I know. Uh, Caitlin and I got into a car accident. Yeah, we did get in a car accident. <gasps> we got rear-ended. We were driving home after a little, you know, Soiree. dinner. And... Did I hear this? Yeah, when we went, took the boat out, because it was the next day. Oh, yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, we got slammed right from the back. And yeah. Fortunately, it doesn't seem like any inju- injuries. No. You seem... No, that that's was right. Because the whiplash, because we were taken off in the boat. She's like, yeah. my whiplash. <laughs> You're like, ow. <laughs> she was. No, I did have a total headache that whole night, and mm-hmm. I was super nauseous well, the whole night. Me too. I had a headache and nauseous. Yeah. Nick's like, take some medicine, go lay down. So I was like, all right. That's pretty much. I went to bed like almost as soon as I got home. So Caitlin, set the scene for us okay. for your story. Well, her name is Desiree Turner. Okay. And this happened on February 16th or 17th. A lot of different places said 16th. A lot of different articles said 17th. I've so had that come up too, where yeah. they're not clear on the date. Yeah, so. but it's 2017. Okay, so it's kind of recent. Okay, and we're in Smith. That's when we were mm-hmm. all innocent and didn't yeah. know 2020 it was, was co- yeah. upon us. We're still hopeful for 2020. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is in Smithfield, Utah, and she is 14 years old right now. She is an a, wow. Okay. So, okay, she is a a equestrian. She's a horse girl. <laughs> I don't know. I can't say an it. Equestrian. equestrian. Thank you. Okay, okay. I said it right. Okay, equestrian, thank you. Yeah. And she is a green belt in karate, oh, an damn. animal lover, and an active member of her church. And she's also a musician, so she played the flute, saxophone, and piano. Dang. Yeah, so she is... Well-rounded. Yeah, unlike me. I play (laughs) zero instruments, FYI. So on this day, her friend Coulter Peterson, he's 16, and his friend Jason Decker, he's Mm. also 16, is a Z, Z Z-O-N, Jason. So not Jason, Jason. Or it's Jason, but with a Z. Jason, with a Z. Jason. Jason. I wish I hadn't said that. Okay, well, (laughs) so they asked Desiree to help them find a ring that they lost. So she followed him to an empty canal behind the school. So this place... Okay, wait, wait, wait. Sorry. Okay. So Jason and who? Coulter. Coulter uh-huh. said, we lost this ring. Can you help us find it? Okay. Yeah. And this empty and, canal... And our, behind... What's our girl's name again? I'm Desiree. Sorry. Desiree. I should have known that. And this empty canal was kind of just like a hangout spot anyways for the teenagers at the high school. To go smoke pot. Maybe. And whatever. I mean, so she Break like, out. Hey, yeah. Cake. Oh. <laughs> a little so as she kneeled down to look for the ring, Coulter takes out a 22 caliber revolver and pulls the trigger. What? Desiree is shot in the back of the head and left for dead. Are you... So... Okay. <laughs> Are they, so, like, friends or... Okay, well, yes. Yeah, so we'll get to okay. it. Okay. Oh, okay. my God. I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot just all of a sudden. So, when Desiree did not return home, a search commenced. Their parents, like, she's not home from school. Of course, you know, she's very active in different activities, so they knew, you know, she's she's a good kid, you know? So, a close family member named Sue actually was the one who found Desiree unconscious in the empty canal. Oh, God. Desiree laid there for eight hours oh before gosh. she was found. When she woke up, her first memory was her dad holding her, and she was in a mysterious place. He said, Des, I want you to know that you are safe, but you have been shot, and you're in the hospital. She was shocked to hear what happened to her. She thought they were friends. Uh, She didn't even know who Jason was. It was just Coulter's friend. So she didn't even know Jason. But she she knew Coulter. 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 Yeah, uh uh-huh. They were friends. Mm. So this... Okay. This motive, I am, is the dumbest motive. Are they trying to get into a gang or some stupid shit? No, it was just one night Coulter and Jason were playing video games when Desiree Snapchatted Coulter. Coulter was annoyed by her Snapchats and Jason said it would be really easy to get rid of her. So they made a plan to cut her throat and shoot her but ended up just shooting her. Okay, okay. Um, Can I add a little advice to the youngins out here? Uh, when you're annoyed by someone, you know, maybe just block them or just have a conversation with them. It's mm-hmm. like, 
you know, you're a little annoying. We don't want to hang out anymore. You don't fucking shoot her. Right? You just okay. be an ass and be like, stop talking to yeah. me. Yeah, hi. So you hurt her feelings a little bit. Yeah. But you haven't killed her. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you so, haven't killed her anyway, so ha I mean, on them. You're not going to go to jail for hurting somebody's feelings, right? That's exactly right. Alyssa, thank you for saying that. Yeah. But there's more. Oh. Jason even kept the shell of the bullet and put it on his windowsill as a trophy. Okay. Oh, okay. S- Fuck Jason. Serial killer. Yeah. yeah. Right? The bullet entered her right side of the brain and it stayed in there. So she currently has a bullet just stuck in her oh, head. Oh, God. Desiree spent 63 days in the hospital and underwent 10 brain surgeries. <gasps> she lost vision in her left eye and oh. also her left arm and her left leg was paralyzed. Oh, my God. Even her internal organs on the left side needed help. So her whole left side pretty much was impacted so because they, it entered the right, right side, side and affected the, everything from the left side. Yes. Oh, my gosh. The brain is so bizarre. I know, right? Ugh. Because of the two boys' ages, because they were 16 when it happened, oh, God. they were initially charged in juvenile court. But, but dun, 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 after sorry. hearing the evidence and the motive and everything like that, they moved it to adult court. They're like, ah, yep. uh, fuck this noise. I they deserve do. a little bit harsher sentence. Absolutely. There are two different hearings, one for each one, but they were both co-defendants in each case. Oh, I sense. see. They okay. tried them different. I mean, separate. They tried mm-hmm. them separate. So, but so Desiree testified at each hearing. Oh, God. Poor Desiree. I know. Oh, uh, I always feel so bad for the victims because it's like they have to go through this again and again and again and relive it. It was like that poor girl, she had to go every single year to his parole yeah. hearing. Mm-hmm. It's like, please don't let him out. Yeah. And it's like every fucking year. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. So Coulter cried out through the whole testimonies. He felt really bad about what he did. Desiree sat in a wheelchair and said that she hopes he thinks of her every time he uses his left arm when he walks, when he wakes up every morning and looks around his prison cell to think of her and how difficult it is for her to see. When he reads a book, she often can't remember the words from the page. And when he has a headache, multiply that by a thousand and remember that's the pain she feels every single day because that bullet is still in her head. I hate you. I hate what you did to me. I hate that I trusted you. Your life will be confined into a small room, and my life will also be confined. Damn. Yeah. yeah right? <laughs> I got kind of power. Yeah. 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 Power that's from a 14 year I mean, well, she's older now, but yeah. right. Coulter pled guilty to first degree aggravated attempted murder and second degree felony robbery because when they shot her, they robbed her and went to get snacks at the grocery store. You're, are you with fucking, her money? With her money. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I've got a lot to say about that, but I'll refrain. <laughs> he was sentenced to 15 years to life, and uh, a 15 years uh, term for the robbery counts. This is run con- concurrent, so to the other. So concurrent is they do all the time at once. So all the counts, they are, so if he gets two Okay, okay. So does this mean if you get 15 years here and 15 years here, yeah. all you have to do is 15 years? For both, because yes. Because... That's insane. Yes, but if it... That is insane. Yeah, but if it's consecutively, then it is separate. So he has to do 15 years for this and then also 15 years for but that. But it's so not. It's, it's concurrently. It's not. It is concurrently. So we... Oh. <laughs> So that's the difference between the two, because people get that mixed up. Um, uh, can I just say you shouldn't be able to do any of your sentences concurrently? Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's total bullshit. Yep. So now it's Jason's day in court. Okay. Let's Jason, hear about this bullshit. He showed no emotion during the trial. He stared straight ahead the whole time. He didn't even look at Desiree when she spoke. Okay. Sociopath. So psycho. Yeah. Sociopath. He called him evil for just standing and watching. No amount of time will fix you. You kept the shell for a trophy. How sick is that? Good luck in prison and remember that because of you, my life is a prison too. What do you have against me? You don't even know me. I hate what you did to me. I hate that I don't have a regular teenage life anymore. I hate that I won't ever have a regular life. He did cry a little bit as he offered a brief apology and asked for the forgiveness from the Turner family. He you said, think that was full acting? Probably, 100%. yeah. He yeah. said, I don't really know what to say, but I am sorry about the things I have done and for the pain I have caused. I don't think you are sorry, nope. frankly, Jason. His, 
<laughs> his attorney asked for a lighter sentence since he was, with his age, the lack of past criminal behavior, and also that he was not the trigger man. Okay, maybe he was also killing animals this whole time. You know. The judge watched Ugh. Jason and saw how little emotion he had throughout the whole time. He said, it's difficult for me to read you. I don't know what's scarier, the actual act or not understanding why or the lack of emotion you have. He pled guilty to first-degree attempted aggravated murder and second-degree felony obstruction of justice, sentencing him to also 15 years to life to run concurrently. Ugh. Desiree went back to school and had a lot to catch up on. She did a lot of packets and online school. Mm. One of her biggest challenges was the fatigue. So pretty much her day was she would do a half day of school, then she would take a nap, then physical therapy workouts, and then go into a hyperbaric chamber to help her with her oxygen and healing. Oh, we've seen hyperbaric chambers before. Mm -hmm. She made up two years of work in just one year so she can keep on track to graduate. Aww. Her parents said, you know, you could take some just more time. Chill. Yeah, it's she's, fine. She wanted to stay with her class. She wanted to graduate on time. I get that. So Desiree, now 17 years old, uh, is crowned homecoming queen of Green Canyon High School. Aww. Very cute. She didn't care much about dances, but she was very excited and honored to be homecoming queen. So it is now May 2020, and Desiree graduates high school. But because of the COVID... I know, I was like, she's fucking 2020, can kiss my ass. Uh, she uh, has a drive-by graduation. Oh, nice. And who's there to celebrate with her? Sue, the family close friend I thought you were going to fucking say, like, Jason or something. Yo, oh, yeah, like, he's what? out for good behavior. <laughs> no. no shit, man. No, it's Sue. She states... There were times I wanted to give up, but I just kept pushing, and now I'm here. As of right now, Desiree plans to take a year off to focus on her physical healing and looking to serve a mission for her Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in the near future. Her and her family have set a GoFundMe to help with her medical costs and to get, actually, Desiree a prosthetic arm on her left arm. Oh, cool. Because it's so weak. Um, as of right now, from recording this, they have raised 36000 $310 out of a goal of $68,000. They also have a Facebook page to see how she is doing and to kind of follow her. Hmm. It's called Praying for Desiree Turner. Desiree is spelled D-E-S-E-R-A-E. -E. So if you want to look her up and donate to the GoFundMe account, mm -hmm. uh, that would be great. So overall, she's doing well. She's just focusing on healing right now. She graduated on time. So she I just think... has a bullet lodged in the right side of her brain. Yeah, well, she's making the best of it. <laughs> and So uh, it seems. So it seems. So she, I think, is going to... Overall, be good. Sir, sort of thrive. Life. Yes, if you exactly. will. So, we're so sorry that happened to you, Desiree, but you really did sir thrive. It. Yeah. yeah. And very brave. Jason can yeah. fucking kiss my ass. Well, yeah. also very brave to do those testimonies as well. So. Exactly. I mean, I even, uh, when I was going through the court case, I was going through just mm -hmm. for sexual harassment. Yeah. Just, I was so terrified mm -hmm. of having the guy who was harassing me be at the mediation. Mm -hmm. I was, like, crying in the parking lot. In, he had shot sense, you in the right side of well, your brain. Well, right. In a sense, like, you know, he never touched me. He never did anything. It was just all psychological damage. But just that, I was so terrified. Mm -hmm. And I got lucky because the two attorneys I had, one was this white, bald dude that looked like a wrestler, and the other one was this, like, six foot six black dude like and they were my attorneys and they were on either side of me and they were just no like lag. they had me yeah i felt yeah. really comfortable and i was <laughs> yeah. like you guys are awesome but it was even then just even approaching the owner who i was essentially suing because he wouldn't do anything about the situation it frightened me so mm -hmm. for her to like show up against people who shot her yeah right like that's ins like good oh. on you man all, All right, right, Michelle, let's, uh... Should we jump in? I'm not excited, honestly. So, okay. Okay. So, okay. the story behind my story, okay. if you will, is this is being trapped in an elevator. Ah! <laughs> no! No! This is Kaylin's no! worst nightmare come it, to life. Because it happened to me. Why don't you tell us the story of how oh you were God. trapped in the elevator? Okay, so I was at softball camp, <laughs> as you do. Bitch. Yes, you are. So I'm at softball camp, and we have to go to, I don't know, third or fourth level. I mean, it wasn't that high of a mm. building. 
Um, but we were like, let's just shove all the softball girls in there to see how many we can fit in it. And that had the coach as well. So we all just pushed in there. And there was, I mean, there was like 20 or some of us. Like, we squished in there. And I hit the button. and like, hit this level. I'm like, boo-boo. And we're going. And all of a sudden, stop. We're just looking at each other. He's like, did you push the button? I'm like, yeah, I'm pushing it right now. It's still going. I'm pushing it. No. We are stuck because we're all fatties, I guess. I don't know. But we, I feel like we... We did. We ex- did the max limits. So we're stuck there. So we hit the emergency thing. Like, hey, come get we're us. We're stuck. We yeah. need saved. So we were standing there squished in this little elevator for about probably around an hour just standing there. And then the firemen had to come get us out. So one chick passed out because it was super hot. They also said, like, hey, the electricity may go out. So it might be dark for you in oh. there. So everyone's freaking the fuck out, and then I'm starting just to cry in the corner because I don't really know anyone because it's softball camp and I haven't made friends yet. So, <laughs> so the firemen opened the ceiling, so we all had to climb out. And since I was crying, they're like, "Get this bitch out of here!" <laughs> Get her first. So I'm like crying, crying up these ladders. I'm like, these firemen are really cute looking. Um, so I get into this room where everyone else is stuck and crying. We're like, are you okay to go back to your, uh, like, room? I'm like, yes. And my friend there, who I played softball with before, she was there. And so I called my mom, and once I heard my mom's voice, oh, I just it was broke all over. down. Yes. So I gave the phone to her, and she talked to my mom. And ever since then, I'm really not cool with elevators. It's just, I, I just, uh, Alyssa... Was very nice and one time tried to do what was it like immersion, immersion therapy, therapy. <laughs> and I got Sour Patch Kids yep. for riding the elevator. Yeah. So I she tried. did it. I did do it because I got Sour Patch Kids and it was like a glass one so I could see where I was at. And it was one floor. And it was mm-hmm. one floor. But I mean, I will do the elevator if I can take the stairs. I will. It's just. Being in there for an hour with people passing out, it was just traumatic. But I feel like it cancels out by being a sexy firefighter savior. Yeah, but when I'm, like, bawling and ugly, like, I <laughs> thank you so much, can I have your number? I press the button, I yeah. swear. <laughs> yeah. So, that's my story. Let's fucking hear it, Michelle. Well, my story is about a bunch of trapped miners in an elevator. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> mining oh. elevator. Underground. Oh, yeah. my God. Uh, oh my uh, God. Elevator shaft that's 2,000 feet deep. Oh, damn. my God. Yeah. So, shall we, we yes. jump in? I can't. Oh, my God. I'm going to have a paint. <laughs> Just all over again. I know. As soon as I saw that they were all trapped in an elevator, I'm like, uh, birthday episode. <laughs> <laughs> Just feels right. True friend. I know. What a fucking bee I am, man. Let's hear it, Michelle. Let's hear it. All right. So this story is about Mario Cockrell. Cockrell? I don't know. Sorry. Um, It's probably all wrong. Mario. It's about Mario. Yeah. And we're back in 1993, and we are in Welcome, South Africa. Okay. So uh, Mario shows up to a shift at 8.15 at night. So he rolls in and all of the miners travel down to the mine together in a big elevator. So cradling his hard hat and his bag of sandwiches, Mario sprints for the elevator and makes it in. And he shoves his way in among the miners that are jam-packed inside. Okay. And they're like, late again? Thanks, Mario. (laughs) Uh, Do they say it like that? (laughs) Yeah. It says, late again? (laughs) I, uh, I'm sure that's exactly yeah. how they said it. So the doors uh, slam shut and okay. they start their 16-minute descent. Oh, damn. And so, yeah, it's a mile long <gasps> down to the President oh Stein God. gold mine in South Africa. That's terrifying. I mean, yeah. that's, that's pretty... That's nerving. scary. Just, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. So you got to hang out in this fucking elevator for 16 minutes as jam-packed with people. Ew. So farting is pretty. <laughs> this uh, passenger elevator carried twenty-one men, and it was known as Marianne. So they okay. named the elevator Marianne. Marianne. Yeah, Marianne, take us down to the bottom. That's from Alice in Wonderland. Just let everyone know. I knew that. Save a girl. So the uh, 
it the inside of the elevator was all completely bare except it was all aluminum around the outside and the only thing that lit up the inside of the elevator was their camp lights so the lights on their uh hard hats that's the only light that was down there oh they go down for about 10 minutes and everything went smoothly and then all of a sudden the cage lurched (gasps) and it stopped so they're like so there's rassi who is marianne's like he's the attendant Uh of the elevator so he just goes up and down essentially all day ew okay um he wasn't worried at all. And he's just like, hold still, guys. Let's just give it a second. Well, everything will work itself out. And then okay. we'll just be able to keep on proceeding forward. Or down, I should say. <laughs> not forward. So, but Mario was not so sure. He heard a strange slapping sound from the darkness overhead. Uh-huh. Um, and then it hit him. The great coils of heavy steel wire rope were piling up on the elevator roof. <gasps> So they could hear them like snapping and then falling down <gasps> on top of the. So these are the giant cables that are holding the elevator up. Oh my god! And I mean, they have still six minutes, like of Just going it. down to be able to so even reach. Six minutes left. Six minutes oh left of their god. descent. Okay. And then the huge winch that was lowering the cage mm-hmm. or lowering the elevator was still running. So it was trying to pull them down while these, like, cables were trying to hold them up. Mm -hmm. So it was only these cables that were kind of keeping them up, I guess, rather than plummeting straight down. Uh Uh-huh. So we're in trouble. Yeah. Mario. (laughs) Us fucking Um, Something had blocked the the cages or the elevator's descent, and whatever has snagged could give away at any moment. So the cable that was heaping on the roof um, could, you know, as they're coming down, he's afraid that they're going to, like, nudge the elevator free. Okay. And then they'll start dropping, of course, to their deaths. (laughs) Of course. (laughs) Of course. Yeah, so there was nothing, you know, as soon as this, all the last of the cables have snapped, then they will, they'll plunge down. So, and it's the height of two Eiffel Towers. Oh my God, I that's can't how do long, that. that's how much more distance they have to go. Ooh, the jump technique won't save you then. No, it sure won't. So, Mario is like, we got to get out of here. Yeah. We got to figure out a way. Um, so, let's see. <laughs> what do you see? I know. God. So, um, as a young man, Mario had been an amateur boxer. Oh, I'm sorry. Are we doing a flashback right yeah, now? Yeah, we're doing oh a flashback. Oh, my God. Okay. We're going to get to know a little bit about Mario. You guys need a special sound for the flashback. I know. So, like, do 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 Usually, I start with the flashback oh. and give a little background to the person, but it didn't feel right this time. <laughs> so, as a young man, mm-hmm. Mario had been an amateur boxer and a physical trainer with the South African Army. Oh, wow. He eventually settled down with his Belgian wife, Aww. Connie. <laughs> and uh, got hired on to the mine. He was now 31 and was saving for his dream, which is to buy a couple of trucks, a little bit of land, and then they could use the trucks in a small business. Oh, So that was okay. his plan. So Mario took action. Okay. So he forced open the elevator doors and looked out. And his little camp light shone onto a sheer concrete oh wall, plunging almost a half a mile straight down. Uh, between him and the wall lay a five foot abyss. Okay. So there's the elevator, <laughs> abyss, and then wall. Okay. So it, you know, there's a bit of a jump, if I you see. will. To his right, the wall cornered and ran along the elevator's side. To the left was empty space, and okay. it was a series of six adjoining shafts used by other elevators. Okay. So, I guess they're in the far right one, and then when he looked over, there was There's all these other, okay. other elevators ready to rock and roll at any time. So, by luck, Marianne, our elevator, had stopped exactly horizontal, had, it's, oh my goodness, had stopped exactly level with a horizontal reinforcement beam cool. that actually had a... 18 inch ledge stepping gingerly onto the beam with his back to the abyss he shuffled halfway around the elevator uh kicking rubble over the edge and not hearing anything hit bottom Uh, (laughs) leaning on the rear of the elevator 
Still with a five foot chasm at his back, he spied a cluster of pipes strapped to the outside of the beam. Oh. Below him, the shaft seemed to recede into infinity. Oh. So he would look down and just couldn't see anything other than just a just black nothing. well of darkness. Yeah, cute. <laughs> every 10 feet, um, it was ringed with another set of cross beams. And every 200 feet, he could see a platform where there was a brightly lit tunnel that would lead to a working space. So he mm-hmm. could see a few things. But because it was night shift and there was a shift change, it was all deserted. So he couldn't see any people. There was other than the people in his elevator. So then Mario felt a trembling that grew until the whole framework of the girders hummed. Uh, Falling stones and dust uh, sprayed his face as he peered upwards. uh, Another car was on the way. No! (laughs) Oh, my God! So the whooshing sound, like a distant train, was getting louder and louder. It was the number six uh, cage that was plummeting down the shaft just left of them. So it was like the next one over. That's where he's standing under? He's standing kind of... In front of the, so this is my understanding. Okay. Is he sort of standing in front of his own elevator in the middle of their own shaft. Okay. Of where they would head down. And so just to the left of him, there's another elevator shaft Mm -hmm. where there is now another elevator headed down. So he's in the middle. He's like safe, but. He's safe, yes. But what he realizes is if this elevator keeps coming down it's going to hit whatever stopped them so and drag it down with them (gasps) so because oh there was all these like sort of wires and cables and things that had sort of broken and then headed over to that second shaft Mm -hmm. and so this shaft that or this elevator that was carrying concrete and rubble and all this other stuff was heading down really quick it would have lodged or would have grabbed onto those cables and drug theirs down with them. Drug their elevator down with them. Or at least okay. dislodged them so then they would free fall down to the Oh desk. my god. Okay. You know, whatever. Whichever is yeah. fine. So, what he did see was a platform that had the elevator that is heading down is going to hit them mm-hmm. within 60 seconds. Oh my gosh. So Mario sort of realizes the peril that they're in and Uh jumps into action. Just 30 feet below the stranded cage, Marianne, uh, Mario saw a station for level 37, 3,700 feet below the surface. It would have a telephone and emergency button and everything. So he needs to find, get his way down to this emergency platform. Within 60 seconds? Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. So his eye fell on a cluster of vertical pipes. Most were too bulky to grip, but then he noticed a galvanized steel water pipe that was only about an inch around. Okay. So he grabbed onto it and there's no time to sort of hand over hand sort of make his way down. So he just released his grip (gasps) and slid down the entire pipe. And then once he got to the bottom, sort of... Held on stronger oh my God, and was okay. able to slow himself down. So he was in a bit of a free fall, yeah. stopped himself, and then was able to um, get onto this cross beam that he could then make his way over to this platform. Okay. And he is completely just... Fucked up his hands? Fucked up his hands. Yeah. That's exactly... It has... It's like ripped all the skin <gasps> off of his, oh, off of his palms. So his boots finally hit the crossbeam level with the station, uh, but he's still five feet out from the platform. Between him and safety was a yawning shaft. I'm not full what that sure what that is, uh, but he took a leaping stride across it. So I think he had to jump across yet another abyss. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. As he did, he was grabbing this gutter pipe that was kind of along the cement wall uh-huh. and sort of shimmering, shimmy, shimmying, what is the word I'm looking shimmying. for? Shimmying. Shimmying his way <laughs> along. Thank you. And as he was almost there, the gutter came away from the wall and he sort of like went out into the abyss again. Oh my and, God. Oh my God. <laughs> like almost lost his balance. <gasps> 
So he was teetering there in space, and with a desperate heave, he got his right foot barely on the lip of the pa- of the platform, and he was straddling this really the dark gap. Oh my gosh! <laughs> it was down. How many feet did I say? Thirty? I don't know. A gazillion. You said like a mile at least. Yeah. Well, it's a mile down oh, okay. altogether. So right. they're about halfway okay. down. Okay. I see. I see. So he lunged frantically, hooked his fingertips onto the platform gate, and was able to pull himself on. Ooh, core strength, man. So, yeah. I'd be dead. (laughs) Uh, He could hear his fellow miners shouting from fear as the the other cage Uh is now roaring closer. (gasps) So, and there's only like other people on there just like, do, 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 yeah. like going yeah. to work. Well, it's all, it's just uh, cement and gravel that's coming down. So there's no other people in the <gasps> other cage. Oh. And they don't, no one knows that they're stranded halfway down for the people cage. If you're oh. the person cage. Oh, interesting. Okay. So he, uh, he runs over and he smashes in the, um. Emergency button. Emergency. Yeah. Thank okay. you. And then he calls up and he's like, stop them, stop all the cages. And so they stop it and he's like, we're trapped down here. <gasps> so he did it. So that the cage six ground to a halt just 70 feet below their own oh my Marianne's gosh. cables. So even a few more feet would have pulled Marianne oh my further gosh. down to the, or let her loose, if you will, <laughs> where she could then plummet to their death. Ugh. Um so he said, keep the brakes on, don't move anything. And so the folks up above kind of knew that there was clearly an emergency and stopped all the uh-huh. elevators. But their ele- elevator is still very much in peril. I mean, uh-huh. it's just stopped by right. something in the track and that is it. And all of the cables, cables. that are holding it up have snapped <gasps> and are on top of the elevator. So they have no cables holding them up, just something that's on the track that stopped them. Yes. <gasps> yes. Oh my yeah, gosh. That's all that, right. Okay. So he goes back to the elevator okay. to start to like help them, everyone else, to get out. To like put him on the platform that he's on? Not quite. Okay. So he said, it's all right. Everything stopped. You can come down. Everyone's like, nah, nah, we're not going to move anywhere. So, but during his army service, Mario Mm -hmm. had learned to lead by example. So he said, pass me my bag and look what I'm doing and just follow me. So they had passed him a sandwich bag and then he showed them like the way that he went. With the bag hooked over his shoulder, he started to lower himself down the pipe. But as the beam of his lamp played underneath the Marianne, he saw something that made his blood run cold. Ooh. Dun, dun, dun. I shouldn't say that about my own story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somehow, Marianne's vertical guide rails had become twisted, throwing it out of alignment. They had caused a corner of the elevator to catch on a bracket clamped to a girder. The weight of the elevator and its men were now resting on barely an inch of thin metal and a couple of screws. So as I said. And so he realized if he doesn't get all these men out, everyone's going to die. Oh my gosh. So climbing back there, he was like, this thing is going to drop at any second. Don't touch it. Just hold your breath and come down the pipe with me. Nobody moved. (laughs) They're like, nah, again. So Mario picked up the smallest miner, a man of about 130 pounds. Okay. uh, Holding the pipe with one hand, he reached out with the other, grasped the man, the grasped the front of the man's jacket and jerked him towards him. The miner screamed and tried to cling to the crossbeam, but Mario was not a man to be disobeyed. Oh, (laughs) Oh, Mario. (laughs) Hi, Mario. Yeah. Mario's taking charge. I would like to meet you someday, Uh, Mario. He punched the miner in the ribs. <laughs> As the miner slumped, Mario seized the man's jacket and pulled him off the ledge. As if curling a barbell, he held the miner in midair so their faces would level. So he's just like, and just pulls him up. He's like, you see, I can hold you with one hand. Trust me. So he threw his arms around. So the man threw his arms around Mario's neck. Ter- and, but terrified, he would not hold on to the pipe. So Mario loosened his own grip for a split second, and they fell. So just holding. Right, he right, did the same move yeah, again yeah, yeah. and got Still. him down to the bottom. Jolted, the man grabbed the pipe. <laughs> With Mario cradling him, they inched lower. Watching in horror, the men on the crowded ledge above were sure the flimsy pipe would break. 
but it didn't. Oh. Finally, Mario and the miner reached the crossbeam at level 37. Now Mario had to figure out how to make the five foot leap to the station platform. The young miner in his arms was in no condition to jump for it. But not, he just got punched. I know, he just <laughs> probably got punched pretty hard, too. Yeah. Uh, so leaving him standing on the crossbeam, clinging to the pipe, Mario stepped out into space once more. At their utmost stretch, his legs just straddled the gap. So okay. he was probably practically doing the splits trying to get over this gap. He twisted his powerful body around and gripped the man's jacket. So Mario said, let go of the pipe exactly when I said. And the man nodded fearfully. That's what it says. <laughs> um, let go, Mario bellowed. The man obeyed and Mario swung, uh, swung him across the gap, throwing him onto the platform using the momentum to fling himself after. Wow. Uh, he dusted off his bleeding hands and hand over hand pulled himself back up the pipe. Oh my gosh. So his hands are just done. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. So they, uh, he had another guy, Jan, come out next and he's like, don't look down. And they went down the pipe again. Um, so he's to the holding him beam. too? Yeah. Like they're all pretty much getting onto his back oh and my he's gosh. just carrying each one down and then getting him over. Are you? Like, I know. I am. <laughs> Impressed with Mario. <laughs> so I guess Mario, when he was younger, used to do this like bar room trick where he learned it in a book from Houdini. Um, <laughs> but his shoulders on one chair and his heels on another, he would tense his body into a bridge and he would like challenge anyone to like stand on top of him to uh -huh. see if the his bridge would collapse and he always won himself a beer, so he was like, I'm going to do that again right now. So over the gap, uh -huh. he put his heels on one end of it and his head on the other. Oh, my and God. And he was like, just crawl, just crawl across me. Oh, it's fine. And the dude's like, no, <laughs> yeah, I don't dude. think you can hold me. Oh, shit. And he's just like, no, I can. Believe me. He had already seen this man who was like, I'm not going across. Yeah. And his assistant was like, uh, I saw him save a couple other people, so I'll go for it. Yeah. And he did. He went down on all fours and like crawled across his oh body my God. and made it over to the platform. So Mario escorted 13 men and climbed up and down that pipe 16 <gasps> times. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, his hands were slippery from blood. Oh, Because, I mean, he ripped his palms open. Yeah, like, every single the time. the very first time. After two more trips, his arms trembled uncontrollably, and his shredded palms burned as though he was holding hot coals. But when he rested to catch his breath, the men were like, Don't stop! Yeah, Don't right? stop! We all need help. And he said, God, give me strength to save these last few. Yeah. So, still gasping, he focused all of his will on making it back up that pipe to try Aww. to save those last people. He descended, he climbed and descended four more times and then went back for the last man, Rassi, Rassi. who was the, the guy who moved oh, the okay, elevator right, right. up and down. He was kind of... What is that word? The elevator attendant? Operator. Operator. Good call. <laughs> All these words are so complicated. <laughs> so, Rassi was scared yeah. stiff. He grabbed the pipe and forced himself to step on Mario's shoulders. Bit by bit, they descended. Near the end, Mario's grip slackened, and for the first time, he slipped. <gasps> His boots struck the crossbeam, and they were saved. Oh, my God. So, they were going down, yeah. and he just barely caught it at the last minute. And then as Mario again stretched his body across the void, Rossi was like, nah, I weigh 200 pounds. Yeah. I'm going to skip on that. And he's just like, you can do it. Yeah. You can do it. Don't worry. Rossi, I know. Just He saw the look of total certainty in Mario's eyes and decided to trust it. So he took three brisk steps along Mario's taut body. <laughs> <laughs> And then a score of hands reached out to seize him and pull him to safety. Oh, my gosh. So there were cheers and tears as Mario was helped up. Shaking, he poured a cup of tea from the thermos for Rassi, and he slumped against the wall. He then phoned the surface and said, we're all safe. And at this point, it's 10 o'clock at night. So they've been below ground for like an hour and 45 oh my minutes. Gosh. 
Minutes later, a group of mine managers and engineers arrived in another cage. One grabbed Mario's hand for a hearty shake, and He's Mario like, winced in agony. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, apparently, when he had punched through that alarm box yeah. that very first time, he broke his hand. Oh my god! So he has been doing this with a cracked bone in his hand <gasps> the entire time. Oh. So it was well after midnight when Mario climbed into bed besides Connie. He was careful not to wake her. The next morning, he cuddled his boys. Only when Connie saw his raw, puffy hands did Mario confess that there had been trouble in the mine. Oh, my gosh. Six months later, Mario was awarded the South African Mining Industry's highest decoration for bravery. But no award speaks louder than the stories that the miners tell of the tough, quiet man who saved 20 lives, one by one, trip by trip, hand over broken hand. Oh, that takes so much physical and mental strength. I can't even fucking imagine. I would be the last one to be like, no, 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 no. (laughs) I'm going with all of them. (laughs) It's adrenaline, dude. Uh, I'd be like the third. I'd be like, all right, two made it. I'm getting out of here. I'm okay. Oh my god, that's terrifying. Just like a black void and you have to free fall and oh I can't. Yeah. Oh my god. Holding oh on my to god, pipes that are just Dude, Mario barely. did it, dude. hundred percent success rate. He did have hundred percent. No one died. With a broken hand, bloody palms, like I can't Yeah, even. he had a broken hand and bloody palms from the very start, from his first little adventure down to that platform. Ugh. My gosh, so. he had the, the balls baller. too. Yeah. I would not even open that cage. Like, let's just wait till <laughs> someone come gets us, guys. You would have died. I Kate. probably would because I was so scared. Oh my god. There, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how I would react in that situation. I would not have handled the it only well. time. Yeah, when I was stuck in the elevator, I cried. That's all I got. <laughs> I got crying in the corner, hoping. Cute fireman. Yeah, I was gonna say that'd be my only concern. Be like, you better not send the freaking uggos. (laughs) (laughs) I want to be carried out of here by a bronze god. (laughs) Yes, agreed. Thank you very much. Oh my god. That one, okay. Oh Mario, you're a hero. Uh, all jokes aside, that was terrifying. And yeah. Good, good for Mario. Happy Mario. Birthday. Oh, thank you, but no thank you. No, like, as soon as oh. I saw this story, I was like, oh my god. I have to save it for Kayla's birthday. And then I realized your birthday was like two days from the last time we recorded. Yeah. I was dumb. I, I was, was. Oh, sorry. Go oh, ahead. no. I was, I was laying in bed at 3 a.m. this morning awake because I'm afraid my husband's going to burn alive. Yeah. Oh, right? okay. Way and to put so, it in perspective for us, Alyssa. So, <laughs> fuck. So I brought, a, I brought a mini story. It's really short. Oh, all right. Okay. Super short. There's really not much like okay. information. Uh, this happened in February of 2015. Okay. In okay. India. India. Okay. Yep. Young woman named Manu. Uh huh. Okay. Riding Manu. the train with her mother. A couple months pregnant. She's not feeling so well, so she's having to go to the bathroom. A little morning sickness, yeah, if you will. Just not. Probably. Yeah. She's not feeling good. So she goes to the bathroom, and then all of a sudden she wakes up. What? What? She passed out. <gasps> she was just not feeling good, and she passed oh. out. And so she wakes up in the bathroom. She's like, man, I just really, I'm really not feeling good. And she realizes something's wrong. There's lots of blood. No! In India, the toilet trains go straight to the tracks. Because they don't actually have tanks. Oh. So the toilet goes to the tracks. Okay, so I gotta pee on this train. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And there's just a hole, Uh correct, Yep. that is just open air underneath. Yes. So we're zipping along the train tracks. Yes. And my whiz is probably going to go... Just right on tracks. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I just okay. want to be clear. Is, yeah, I, mean, I wish I hadn't the, said yeah. whiz. India. <laughs> this is how so the trains are in India. Okay. So they get to the destination and she is hospitalized. Okay. okay. She has no child. <gasps> what? That's upsetting. A warehouse worker uh-huh. a few miles past hears a baby crying. <gasps> what? And finds a baby on the train tracks. <gasps> What? Yes. He was four and a half pounds. Oh! Oh my god, oh my god! I was like, they were going so fast, and she just had the baby, and he just fell on the tracks? Yep, she passed out and ended up giving birth on the toilet, not knowing. Oh! Baby fell onto the tracks. (gasps) Oh my god. Baby was fine. Whoa! Babies can Babies totally fine. Survive. Babies are bouncy. Crazy shit. Cra- you yeah. can... They're soft, dude. <laughs> Apparently babies, like, newborns especially, 
can live a, like a solid week or longer than adults can with no food or water. Really? Yeah, they can survive mm-hmm. a, quite a long time yep. with nothing. Like I said, they're soft, man. They're bouncy. Okay. <laughs> so probably just boop, boop, boop. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 tumble around. Both mom and baby were fine. Oh. They were? That's crazy. Yep, they ended up in the same. So the baby was taken to the closest hospital for first aid. Found out that mother was at this other hospital with, say, you know, they yeah. figured it out and sent baby to her. <sighs> Baby's Aww. fine. Mom was well, fine. how terrible would it be like, hey, you're at the hospital, you had birth, where's my baby? I don't, yeah, we're I don't not know. real clear at this yeah, point. Yeah, like, oh yep. my gosh. Yep, and apparently this isn't the first incident that this happened in <gasps> India on their trains. Really? Because of the, yeah, I guess women have babies on trains a lot. I don't know. Or, like, fairly regular? I don't I know. Guess. I don't know how regular it just says it wasn't the first incident that this has well, happened. Well, I guess it's better, I mean, I don't know, is it better than on the tracks or just, like, in a septic tank, you know? Right. Right? Probably guess, on the tracks. Yeah, so right? Be exactly. Better. Yeah. Could Crazy. you imagine, like, growing up, like, now that little, he's a little boy, by the way. Yeah, yeah, Little yeah. boy, very healthy. Five years, yeah, he's five. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah he be fine. But could you imagine, like, being an adult later on and be like, oh, like, oh where were you born? Like, oh. What's your birth story? What's your beautiful birth story? <laughs> That's a good story, story though. My That's mom dropped story. me in a toilet and I fell on the train track. <laughs> And a warehouse, and like that's the thing too, is a warehouse worker at a warehouse near the train tracks heard the baby crying and went to investigate. Had he not, another train could have come by. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, and hit the god. baby. Yeah. Yep. Oh my gosh. So. That's crazy. That was my. Well, this thanks for that little story. My bonus, my little bonus story. This is, uh, this has been I three, had... three different stories. Yep. All right. Good stories, ladies. Alyssa, thank you so much for joining us. We're sorry you're here under different circumstances we're but... very happy you're safe though. yes oh thank my you. god absolutely yes. so we will keep you updated about what's going on with the fires and stuff but so far everyone is safe everyone hopefully is in healthy. two weeks there's yeah updates as in they're all gone and yeah it's, it's absolutely fine. hopefully monday brings rain like they say it's going to yeah it's supposed to be tomorrow now is it yeah it's supposed oh, to okay, be good. sooner it's supposed to be tuesday then it was monday and now i heard it's supposed to be sunday, sunday. sunday. Oh, great please All right. Well, thank you so much for listening, and we hope you enjoyed this episode. And catch us next time. And follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and you can even go to our website at IShouldTotallyBeDeadRightNow.com and let us know how you guys are doing if you're in this whole fire thing situation. So stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Bye. (sighs) That's all you get. Goodbye. No. Oh, Oh, goodbye. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Happy birthday, Caitlin. Oh, and happy birthday. I'm not fucking saying that. No, that's not true. Happy birthday. I took you on a boat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Very nice. You're welcome for my gift of the elevator traumatizing story. Okay, thank you.